As a bio major, I am often amazed by how frequently the concept of natural selection is misunderstood. This is despite natural selection arguably being the most important concept in biology, and the most straightforward too. Not counting the nearly half of Americans who don't even believe evolution is real, I often see people think evolution means the strongest, the smartest, or the richest survive. However, in reality, being lean, decreasing intellectual ability, and using as little resources as possible is often selected for. The proponents of social Darwinism definitely didn't have a very good grasp of their biology, to say the least. This is where I think video games can be a very helpful tool. Scientists have been using computers to simulate and predict evolution since as long as we've had computers powerful enough to do so. Multiple copies of these creatures can be made and simulated together. Today, the principles of natural selection have been used for far more than just biology. You designed that thing too, Sonny? Uh-uh. Nobody designed her. She pretty much evolved by herself. We used a genetic algorithm to make it. Ever hear of that? They use it to build the cars for bullet trains and stuff. We start by creating a few different models. The data for each design is treated as the genes. The kids that have the best aerodynamic traits survive and pass on their genes. You get this sort of gene-based evolution across generations, like animals in real life. What really interests me is how these concepts can and have been applied to video games. While a few games have tried sprinkling their plots with the philosophical or political implications of it, I'm far more excited about seeing natural selection being simulated to show realistic population growth and change. In the last few decades, game companies have spent quite a bit of money trying to produce complex physics engines, including realistic liquid simulation, because outside of just looking cool, it opens up a lot of new gameplay possibilities. Oh! While likely just as much money has been spent trying to faithfully simulate the evolution of populations, and with great success too, it's mostly done in labs, not for entertainment. Evolution as a gameplay feature is a mostly untapped concept that I would love to see featured in more games. Yet, by using the simple core requirements of natural selection, multiple interesting simulator games have actually been developed that I think deserve some notice. Maybe it's just me, but I find these things to be a lot of fun to both play around with and observe. Our first game, 3D Creature Evolution, is a game where understanding the mechanics teaches you the basics of natural selection as it applies to the real world. Created in 2007, but updated ever since, it is a simulator trying to mimic how evolution plays out in the real world. You start with a given number of creatures, all of which have different traits. Each creature is then simulated and scored on how well it can perform a given action. This could be how fast it could move on land, how well it could swim, or how high it could jump. The creatures that scored best on these tasks reproduce, but many of the new generation have random mutations which might affect their performance. Just like in real life, for some it'll turn out to be helpful, but for most, not so much. Seeing adaptation in real time, and the novel ways these creatures evolve to handle each given fitness demand, is a real treat to me. To nitpick the game though, my biggest problem is that in real life, there isn't a single fitness goal that determines reproductive success, outside of the goal of reproductive success itself. As I've explained earlier, in real life, the fastest or the strongest won't always be the most evolutionarily fit. Simply being able to survive to have viable offspring is all that truly matters. For example, if you really wanted to win evolution, as in have the most children that will go on to have children themselves, just become an egg or sperm donor. You get all the benefits of passing your genes on to the next generation without actually having to take care of any of your children. I'm not sure when this broken strat's going to be patched, but for the time being, it's clearly the most optimal way to play real life. With what I've just said in mind, let's go to our next game, the appropriately named Species. Unlike our previous example, in Species, each animal is simulated together, and to better reflect real-world natural selection, each animal's species lives or dies based on its reproductive success alone, meaning that all adaptations you see in this game was acquired directly because it helped this goal. 
changing the environment around you, or creating barriers between animals, just like in real life, is the best way to create speciation. The process of one animal species becoming two separate ones. Outside of natural selection itself, you can clearly see other forms of evolution taking place, such as genetic drift. The process of random mutations that neither harm nor help an organism building up in a population over time. This tends to have the effect of future generations appearing different from their ancestors. A real-world example of this would be plants of the same species exhibiting different flower colors simply because both colors are just as good at attracting pollinators. Moving on, we have what at first appears to be the most abstract, but in my opinion, the most approachable of these simulators. Biogenesis, like the other simulators shown, tries to portray evolution in real time, but doesn't in a way I think is the most straightforward for those unfamiliar with the real world mechanics. Starting with a group of randomly generated creatures, each color on these organisms show a specific function. For example, green segments photosynthesize, generating energy for the creature, allowing it to grow and reproduce. Red segments take energy from other creatures that touch it, making it useful for predation. Gray segments kill whatever touches that part of the creature, but unlike red, don't leach energy. And blue act as a shield, meaning that it's immune to the effects of red and gray. With each generation of creatures being a bit different from the ones before, you can quickly see new survival strategies develop. Here you can see a group of mostly defensive photosynthesizers being preyed on by a group of small energy leeches. In my run, swastika-like shapes seem to be the optimal survival strategy, for some reason. But a while later, new forms came to dominate the area. To finish these examples off, I would like to bring up what is undoubtedly the most popular of these sims, the Creature series. A simple overview can't really do it justice, but until I release a full series review, all you really need to know is that it was a successful franchise and brainchild of the mad scientist Steve Grant, who was, and to this day still is, obsessed with creating artificial life. I've been both fascinated and terrified by this man for years. He's a graceful and beautiful robot like me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. The series was popular enough to have a few sequels, as well as a few planned spin-offs, and has a fan base that still talks about the series to this day. The games featured both physical and mental evolution, allowing the creatures to exhibit complex behaviors. One thing of note from the series is that creatures would sometimes mutate to evolving biological immortality, meaning they literally wouldn't age, which was hilariously broken. Grand is currently trying to create complex learning behaviors for his next game, Grandroids. Definitely give these a look if you're into this sort of thing as much as I am. In closing, I bet a lot of viewers are wondering if there's any use to simulating natural selection outside of the pure novelty of it. I mean sure, watching a group of blocks learn to crawl might be interesting, but that alone isn't going to sell anyone a $60 game. Well, I think there are actual practical benefits to having such a system implemented. To show you why I think this, let's look at the MMO Walkfu. When it was first released, it spent a lot of time trying to advertise the ecosystem feature of the game. Kill too many wild pigs or chop down too many trees and there won't be any left for players to use. Given that MMOs are basically an objectivist paradise where players only care about themselves or their guilds at most, most players never really bothered caring about the ecosystem, so for the most part, it was ignored. I guess you could call it an analogy of the current human condition if you really want to be a hippie about it. But let's say we implemented some natural selection to this. Let's say different pigs with different traits existed on a server. Kill too many easily killable pigs by setting them ablaze, and suddenly only the fire resistant pigs survive and repopulate. The more players kill a specific animal, the more it adapts to dealing with what's killing it. This could create the benefit of having a constantly changing meta, as each couple of months, different traits become more popular in a population, leading to players eventually needing different strategies for killing things in the environment. Basically, it can be a form of auto-balance that doesn't actually require fine-tuning from the developer. A system like this could likely work in almost any open-world or MMO-style game, 
by collecting survival ship data from servers and using it to update the plants and animals in an area. Or what if we go the behavioral route and apply it to AI? Using machine learning and collecting death statistics, a developer could update AI behaviors in response to how players are playing their game. This could result in very intelligent and difficult seeming AI that seems to act different in each situation without the developers having to code such complex AI from scratch. The game Darwin's Demons has applied similar ideas, creating enemies that get progressively harder simply because the aliens that are good at surviving reproduce. I'm not saying that implementing these features in fun or interesting ways would instantly be simple or easy to do, but neither was developing the complex physics engines we've seen in games either. And population genetics and dynamics have been studied for decades now, and simulating it is well understood. At this point, the challenge is more creative than it is engineering. It really just comes down to some big name video game company using it for something cool. So until the day comes where I can finally play my big budget evolution dream game, at the very least, I know I could have fun toying around with these lower budget ones instead.